It's not your destiny. Most people never discover their greatness. Go to their graves living a life of mediocrity, living a life far below their potential. Oliver Wendell Holmes said most men and women go to their graves with their music still in them. A friend of mine was eulogizing his, his brother in Chicago and I attended the funeral. A powerful speaker. He gives a presentation called How to Start Over Again, How to Make It from Scratch. Dwight had lost his life for years to drugs and crack cocaine, lost everything, and he came back again. Comeback power going around the world, changing people's lives. And he was eulogizing his brother, and he said, my brother was in the room in California. They told me he died by himself. And he said, and I submit to you that my brother didn't die by himself. A lot of dreams, a lot of potential. My brother had a lot of good ideas. And my brother was one of those guys said, that said, one day I'm going to, and everybody started laughing because everybody knew his brother was talking about various things all the time. One day I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And one day I'm going to do, he had a lot of good ideas that he never acted on. And when he died, when he took his last breath, all those ideas went down in the grave with him. Henry David Thoreau, come forward, what are your words? He said, oh God, to reach the point of death, only to realize that you've never lived, that you've never scraped the surface of your potential. If I went down this road right here, and I said, what kind of car you want? They reached around the line. And then at the end of it, I handed each one the key to what they asked for. Suppose one of them said a new Jetta, I gave him the key. Suppose one of them said a new Lexus, I gave him the key. Suppose one of them said a new Mercedes, I gave him the key. Suppose one of them said a new Rolls Royce, and I gave him the key. Now, they would all be happy with their car until they thought about it. Because them other three that didn't ask for the Rolls Royce could have said, because even if you don't keep the Rolls Royce, if you sell it, that's 400000 U.S. I don't know what that is over here. That's like $789 billion. You're not anointed to be someone else. The anointing on your life, the favor, the blessing is to be you. You won't activate the favor. You won't see the abundance if you're trying to be something that you're not. Feeling wrong on the inside because you're not like someone else. I stepped up to minister. I wasn't like my father. I'm more calm, more laid back. What I thought was a weakness was actually a strength. People started watching and attending in record numbers. Half the people watch, they say they've never been to church, never listened to a minister on television. I wonder if you're fighting what makes you unique. Are you frustrated over what you think is a weakness when in fact it's a strength? Quit wishing you were something different and step in to who God made you to be. He didn't accidentally give you the wrong personality, make you too quiet, too outgoing, the wrong gifts. He matched you with your world. You have exactly what you need to fulfill your destiny. I have a friend that has a very strong personality. He's very kind, very talented, but he's type A. Straight to the point, aggressive, get it done. One day he and his wife were having a disagreement. They were debating something. She finally said, why can't you be more like Joel? He said, excuse me, I think I'm supposed to be like Jesus. She said, that's fine, but why don't you start with Joel? We can always grow and improve, but you can't fight who God made you to be. Don't go your whole life wishing you were something different, wishing you had a better personality, wishing you were more talented, wishing you were like your neighbor, when in fact you're exactly who you're supposed to be. What you don't realize is half the time your neighbor is wishing they could be you. They see all the good things about you. Do you? What would happen if you would start loving yourself? accepting your gifts, not beating yourself up for mistakes, not down on yourself because of weaknesses. Stay positive towards yourself. Most of us wouldn't criticize other people. You wouldn't go up to that person sitting next to you, say, you sure don't look good today. Those clothes don't do anything for you. You may think it, but you wouldn't say it. Why are you criticizing yourself? When you criticize you, you are criticizing God's creation. You might as well look up and say, God, you didn't do a very good job on me. He doesn't make mistakes. Don't say another negative thing about yourself. I'm so undisciplined. I can't do anything right. I don't have a good personality. I'll never lose this weight. Never break the addiction. Zip that up. Quit being against yourself. 
You don't need another enemy. Be as good to yourself as you are to others. Be kind to yourself. Be merciful to yourself. Be loving to yourself. When you wake up in the morning, look in that mirror, instead of saying, oh man, I'm getting so old. Look at all these wrinkles. It's all downhill from here. Try a different approach. Good morning, you good looking thing. I'm made in the image of God. I'm a masterpiece. I have royal blood flowing through my veins. Let me explain this part about investors. We have one of our investors, a $5 billion fund from New York, Adelaide Fund, okay? Oscar De La Hoya is another one. Gabriel Brenner is another one, okay? Here's how investors look at you. They first look at you, they say, wow, he's so impressive. Then they give you money based on this. They don't give you money based on their personality. They give you money once they see this. So all the A-type personality, the excited, big, you know, the machismo, all those guys, if you don't pay attention to this, forget about valuation. You may look good because you made a few sales, you're not building value, okay? Operations is is constantly figuring out like you make a list you make lists and say this job this job this job this job I'm doing seven different things right now why am I doing these seven different things I need somebody that helps me with this I need somebody who helps me with this that's operations biz dev what's biz dev okay relationships so strategic partnership finding somebody that if I help you you win here and I win here you give me clients I give you clients we cross pollinate everybody wins strategic partnerships biz dev that means you got to shake hands so do you make a list and say who would benefit from what I'm doing right now who can I help that I also need their help. This is the part where you got to go out there and shake hands. Whatever industry you're in, there's annual conferences, there's annual conventions. Whatever industry you're part of, you got to go to them. You got to go to them and get ready. Shake hands. Shake hands. We have our own. And by the way, the insurance industry, just so you know, you name me one product in the world more boring than life insurance. Let me say this one more time to you. I'm in the industry. You name me one product more boring than life insurance. Hear me out, guys. What I do for a living is we talk about dying every day. Listen, we come to you and the moment the word life insurance comes up what do people do a guy came up here with a camera in my face he says hey Pat what do you think about the PNC and insurance future in the industry what do you think is gonna happen to PNC and insurance I said it's a big difference he said no it's not it's insurance I said no believe me it's a big difference why is it a big difference he was at this event like six hours ago he says what's the big difference I said it's a law to buy auto insurance <laughs> It's not a lot to buy life insurance. It's a choice. And life insurance always has to be what? Sold. I have to come sell it to you. No one wakes up and says, babe, I feel so good about buying some life insurance today, babe. Let's go get some life insurance today. Oh my gosh. No one does that. So I have to find a way to get to you, right? So we go to these conferences and we shake hands and we build relationships and we see new products, new things coming out, new relationships. And some of the people you shake hands with, then you build business, build relationships. By the way, this is all manual. For instance, if I work for you, I was talking to this gentleman right here. He's based out of New York, I believe, right? You're based out of New York. Him and I are talking outside. Great questions he's asking me at Wolfgang Puck. By the way, one thing about Syl and Al, uh, Albert, I gotta tell you guys, like this is an absolute world-class event from the moment I came here to now. Everything about their treatment. Give them another round of applause for a phenomenal job these guys have done. Seriously, unbelievable. So he comes up to me. We start talking. What do you do? I got 50 salespeople. Is it this company? No, but I know about that company. And we're gonna kill that company. Awesome. So do you have a manual? What kind of manual? Is there a manual that if I come and work for you, you can give to Albert, that Albert can teach me the process, sales flow of selling a product in your company? Uh, no. Are there scripts that I know for a fact you can pass it over to me? Uh, yes, no. All of that stuff is down here. It's good. But it's not exponential. Here's exponential, okay? This is the part of the business that gets your business to suddenly grow. So exponential growth, one of them to the left is next innovative campaign. What's the next innovative campaign? Next innovative campaign is, who remembers when Mitsubishi first came out with the next innovative campaign? They said, 0% down, zero down, and we pay for your gas for 12 months. Who remembers that? Anybody remembers that? Gas for 12 months. You know what I said? Here's what I said. Brilliant. Because everybody on TV was talking about gas prices are $5. And people are like, oh my gosh, babe, they're going to pay for our gas for 12 months let's go buy Pitsubishi it's not it's like all they're doing is giving you a $2,500 what do you call it a, 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 what do you call that stuff a, a rebate it's not a big deal but what a great next innovative campaign hey right now if you become a prime member of Amazon we're gonna give you extra stuff oh my gosh they're giving this away they're not giving it away believe me no one gives anything away for free they're gonna make their money so you in this part this right here guys this like I talk about four things I say you got to outwork you know you got to out improve you got to out strategize outlast one more time out work is what hard working right how many Latinos do we have in the room here any Latinos here okay 
Hey, can we all say that Latinos are some of the hardest working nationalities in America or the world? Yes or no? How come not a lot of them are millionaires? Because they just know how to work. I don't know many lazy Latinos, but they're hardworking.